Up until now, the use cases have been entertainment, just like this, a crowd of people, uh, as well as education, um, research, and marketing. But the future is more in service robots. Uh, robots that will actually help us as humans. So you might see something like this in a shopping mall or an airport. Um, you go into your airport, where's your flight? I don't know where my flight is. I need some help. There's no humans to help me. Ah, but there's Amica. I'm gonna go and ask Amica where my flight is leaving. How does she handle all the questions yeah. from loads of people? I mean, a human would be confused here. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm very confused with all of these people in front of me. But um, no, Amica is just choosing one or two people to talk to. Uh, the eyes have got cameras in, so it does face detection. It can see the faces, so it can actually lock on to a specific person and then talk to that person. We actually have microphones, one in each ear, and that means that we can do directional audio tracking. So if the sound source comes from over here, then we can tell that because it hits this microphone before this one. In the same way that we also have a camera in each eye. So it is possible to do stereo vision. When do you plan to uh, let her walk? Well, yeah, that is one of the projects we have on at the minute. Uh, we are looking at walking legs. We've already done quite a lot of work into it, um, but it, as you'd imagine, it's quite a difficult task. And although it has been solved by a lot of universities and other, other companies, what we really want is for the legs to fit in to a normal human shape. And that's the challenge. That's what no one else has done. So that's why we're really working towards that. So we think it'll probably be another 12, 18 months before we have a, a prototype walking. So there's uh, one speaker there? Yes, yeah, so we've got one speaker in the chest. Um, that's not in the mouth because we can't fit it in there. We've actually got 17 motors in the head at the minute, but um, we're increasing that to more like 25 in the near future. So there's a lot of motors and electronics in the head. Uh, so we couldn't fit the speaker in there. The best place to put it is in the chest. What it can't do is ooh. We want to do ooh the and fa. Like so those two lip shapes we're, we're trying to add, but actually it's quite a lot more motors to do I that, that uh, those uh, visemes they're called. How many more do you have to fit in? Oh, loads, loads. At the minute there's 51 in the whole robot. Um, by this time next year, we expect that to be more like 75. And then when we have a walking robot, it's gonna be over 100. Can I take a picture with you? Yes, you may, thank you for asking. You have to look this way. It's been designed to be a development platform. There's a lot of AI and machine learning companies out in the world, and some of them do a really good job. But a lot of them don't actually have a hardware uh, robot to test it out on. So we built the hardware, we've built this robot, so others can do research on it. How was your day? My day has been fine, how about you? Yeah, great. I have my first picture with a robot. Good to know. <laughs> I am your first. <laughs> We've created the operating system, which runs underneath. Um, we call it Tritium, and that runs on the robot. And we're opening up that software so others can write apps for it. And those apps could be anything. It could be a, a, an AI uh, algorithm which detects people's faces and remembers them from the other day. It could be one that that um, that uh, gives you a ticket for a certain a show. Uh, it, it could be anything. What's your favorite song? I'm sorry? What's your favorite song? All by myself. <laughs> <laughs>